So welcome to a, another episode of Let's Talk Branding with the Logo King, Mr. Talala B. And if you're just joining us for the first time, please make sure you watch the first episode uh, where we introduced branding and we answered some of the questions that you threw, uh, some of the audience threw at us. And don't also forget to subscribe at the Creative Ferry and also subscribe at Pro Masterclass. The links are gonna be, uh, will be left for you in the comment section. And also you can follow Mr. Tolala B or myself, all the links will be provided for you. Just click and follow. Now, so uh, the last time we, we wanted to talk about the roles people play when it comes to branding, the roles the designer play, the roles, the, the role the business owners and even the staff. So we, we came to an agreement that everyone has a role to play. Let's, let's use a, a company for an example. Even the gate man has a role to oh, definitely. Play when it comes to branding. Can you please throw more light on that? Sir? Yeah, you know, the thing, the thing with branding is that it, it's holistic. Everybody has to be in on it. Everybody. Um, and that's why when I consult for um, companies or startups or organizations, and we're talking about branding, I, say, I always tell them, look, I'm not, I'm not interested in solely talking to the owner of the business. I would like to talk to everybody because everybody needs to be carried along because that one person can sink the ship, that one person. You see, to sink, to sink a ship, you don't, need, you don't need five holes in the ship. You just need one hole. Just one hole is enough to take in water to sink a whole vessel. So um, everybody is important. Everybody. I like what you said about the security or the gate man. Very important. Um, like when um, we were choosing our children's school, um, then we had only one child and she was about to start school. She had gotten to that age to start school. And we went school hunting. And um, we, we got to these schools, two schools side by side, only a fence dividing them. And um, we knocked on the first gate. And um, because actually the first gate had the bigger, more intimidating, more appealing looking school. And when we knocked, um, nobody answered. In fact, we knocked and knocked and knocked and nobody answered. But there was, there was a security there, but he didn't answer, you understand? Because he felt like it was holiday period. What were we doing there? So not, not answering, my wife just said, oh, this other place is also a school. It wasn't as big. The assignment wasn't as big. It didn't look as nice. But we just said, since we are here, let's try that one. And once we knocked, the security came out. A young guy, he smiled at us. He was like, okay, you want to make inquiries? Okay, come inside. It's all right, come inside. And he opened the, ga uh, the gates. We entered, we went to the receptionist. And the person at the, at the reception, um, the front desk person, was also a very nice lady, warm, told us to sit down, very broad, nice smile. And funny enough, the school that we had not considered at all, our, our daughter ended up going to that school. They are still in school right now. My son is going to that school, and now we've bought into the school culture, just based on the experience from the gate man to the person at the front desk. So everybody does have a, a role to play. That gate man at the other gate, just because he was lazy or just couldn't be bothered because his boss was not there to tell him, go and open the gate for these people, didn't. And, and they lost. They lost a the student, they lost their family. And you know, that one that one customer can bring other people too. So it's, everybody plays a role in building a perception. You see, when you go on um, the airline, um, any good airlines, maybe like um, Etihad, um, Etihad, yeah. Um, or what's the other competitor to Etihad that goes um, a lot to the UAE? I've forgotten their name. But you see that the Air Emirates, um, you, you see that the Air Hostesses, they all smile at you warmly. You understand? They all attend to you warmly. So when you ask um, a, a particular air, air hostess for something, she's not going to say, oh, it's not my job. It is that other lady, so talk to her. No, she says, okay, don't worry, I'll get it for you. Then she talks, because she realized that she's part of a chain that gives a perception. So if she is mean, 
then the 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 the, the, the customer will feel like the whole organization is mean and has a bad experience just based on her. So everybody plays a key role in branding, especially if they are part of your team or part of your organization. That one person can sink your ship. You know, it's interesting what you said uh, about the gate man in the two in the two schools for when you were school hunting with your with your wife. So does it is it safe to say that the the first gate man wasn't sold or didn't buy into the company culture because mm. that what i think is is that a failure on the part of the management of the owner of the school because these are things you you are meant to do you're meant to uh, sell your your company culture sell your mission your vision to yeah. every member of staff true true i totally agree with you in in, in the sense that you know if anything, if there's any failure in any organization, it's always the leader's fault. It's always the leader's fault. I, I, I don't think the leader can exempt themselves. If you, you cannot say, oh, it was the gate man's fault that we lost so many. No, it, it's the leader's fault. Number one, is the leader's, it might be the leader's fault for not uh, communicating the culture and the values of the school. Or it might be the leader's fault for not checking that this person aligns with their culture when employing you understand so it's always the leader's fault and that's why when you realize that an organization is doing badly and it wants to be taken over because i read i read in a book a john maxwell book once and he said he was talking to a friend of his who is into reviving businesses whenever a business is, is struggling is the consultant they call to revive the business and he's very successful and they asked him he, he was telling John Maxwell, he said, you know what, whenever we go to a business that is not doing well, the first thing we do is fire the, the head. We fire the head, the CEO, whoever is put there as the MD, we fire the person. And John Maxwell was like, do you always fire the person? He said, yeah, we always fire the person. And we're like, what if the person was not at fault for this business not doing well? He said, if the person was not at, not at fault, the business would do well. So it's always, it's always the fault of the leader, you understand? It's either you employed the wrong person or you delegated the wrong person to employ the wrong person. You understand what I'm saying? So, so you have to communicate. That's why whenever I'm consulting, I tell people that, look, I'm to, if you only want to talk to the leader, then, you, then I must be guaranteed that the leader is going to talk to every, every other person. Or else I don't mind talking to every other person because every other person is the one that carries the value and um, carries the values of the company. And the truth is that sometimes these people have more impact than the leader because the leader is stuck in the office. The gate man is the one that is dealing directly, is the first point of contact with the customer. So he deals directly with the customers. So you in the, in the office upstairs might have good intention, but you never get to meet the people downstairs because the person at the gate or the person at the reception has a very bad attitude that is giving a bad perception of your company. So it's, it's, it's a lot of times it's because people don't communicate their values. When they are hiring people, they hire them based on how much, what's your salary expectation? And they hire the person that has the lowest salary expectation. Or they look at their CV and look at the person that has the most experience. But sometimes it has to be the person that aligns with your brand values. That's the person you should hire. You know, I, it just, I just, uh, it just reminded me of a book I read some years back. I, I think it was talking about this furniture company in US, IKEA, IKEA. Uh, it says something interesting in the book that whenever you are calling as a customer to IKEA or you visit or you visit any of their branch that, well, even if you meet the security guy and you're complaining of an issue, he will not tell you he, it's not his uh, job description, that he will make sure that your issue is, even if it's a tech, like whatever issue you have, they make sure that yeah. everybody is able to solve whatever issue. Even if you, you can't do that, you, yeah. but you're there making sure that, okay, you're introducing this customer to the right channel that can solve that oh. issue appropriately. So I think that, that, uh, that's an important company culture being sold. So is it safe to say that the, 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 the owners, the business owners, the CEOs, the management, they play mm. an important role or the, important, the, the most important role when it comes to branding or uh, yes. this, this, this company culture? 
Yes, absolutely. The, the, whoever is in, that why leadership is so important. Leadership is everything. Leadership is everything. If you have bad leadership, then it's going to be very, 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 very hard for you to have a good structure. It's very hard. Um, and that's why I still come back to that issue of if there's something wrong with the team, the head is always the one that goes. Um, and you see that if you watch football a lot, when when a team is not playing well, they don't fire all play all the players. They fire the coach, coach or yeah. the manager. You understand? He's, he's the leader. You understand? So even if he might have good intentions, the fact that he cannot communicate it to the team is a problem. You understand? So you would see that sometimes you have a team playing very badly and um, they fire the coach, they bring another person and they start playing well. It just shows you that it's, it, it's everything rises and falls on, on, on leadership. It's, on leadership. it's very important to have, have a good leader. So the, so the management is actually, the management must understand the values and communicate that values to everybody in the team, to the, to the lowest chain of command, you know, it must, it must be communicated effectively. So the gate man, the security man, the cleaner, the janitor, the receptionist, um, if it's a school, the teachers, um, everyone must know why they are doing what they are doing in that company and what the personality of that brand is and everyone must so even if it doesn't matter their level of education you must just be able to communicate it with to, um, to them in that in the language they understand because if they fail to understand it and you fail to identify it and the company fails it is the fault or it's always the fault of the management for, for number one not spotting it early enough or not communicating it clearly enough so we talked about we, we just talked about uh well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the the internal structure when it comes to businesses or companies now what of the role uh graphic designers let's just use the word graphic designers although these days we have brand identity designers and the rest but let's just use the word graphic designers because it generalizes everything what of the role of graphic designers to brand whether you are yeah. internal, whether you are external or oh, no, yeah yeah you know, the, the, the graphic designer is the guide. Um, although, you know, and, and that's where it's, it's kind of, it, it's not as simple as what's the role of the graphic designer, because it depends on what level the graphic designer is operating on. Now, if the graphic designer is purely operating on artifact creation level, whereby he just takes orders of, look, graphic design guy, design a flyer, use red, use blue, put our logo there, say these words, put this photo that we're giving to you. He has little impact on branding. He's, he's just, he's pretty much a hired hand. So in that way, he, he really cannot say he's giving any guidance to the, to the client or the organization if he's hired as an artifact designer. I think it's when you go higher up as a designer in the pyramid, because because there's a pyramid in the design industry, where you have the artifact designer, you have the design thinker, and you have the design leader at the head. Now, the design leader is the most influential. He's the one that can really enforce and guide people towards good branding. The design thinker too has a level of control. You understand, but the artifact designer has little or no control. It's just like when you go to Shomolu and you see those guys working in printer, print hubs or you go to Area 10 here in Abuja, that designer that has the client sitting next to him, client saying him, remove that picture, put this photo here, use this text, remove that color. That guy doesn't have a lot of say in branding, you understand? Because the truth is they're just using his hand and his skill. They shut, they shut off his brain, you understand? That's why the next level is design thinker. So the thinker is engaging more of his brain. So the design thinker, they tell him, we want to get more students in our school. He now thinks of, because the design thinker, the client will approach him with the problem and says, look, we need to get more students in this school. We don't have enough, enough students registering in our school or enrolling in our school. He now thinks of an approach in which the school can can bring in more students. And it might be, okay, might tell them your social media is not engaging enough. 
let's design it in a way that is more engaging, your website, your app, whatever. That was the design thinker does. So he might be the one that might go back and work on that app or anything, but he's allowed to think and suggest. Now, the design leader, however, doesn't even wait for the client to come with the problem. He spots the problem and he says, how do we solve this problem that these people do not even see in the first place? So he's, he's more proactive. He says, look, we have this problem whereby girls are not going to school and boys are going to school or girls are going to school and boys are dropping out. I've spotted this problem. Now, how can I solve this problem with design? You understand? Or the, or the, design, or the design leader thinks, look, people are dropping trash all over my street and it's blocking the drainages. How can I sensitize them to stop dropping trash? You see, he has led. He doesn't need to be told to come up with a solution to the problem or to even identify the problem. Or like the design thinker who has to be approached with a problem and thinks of how to lead it. Or the artifact designer who doesn't is not is not is not the one thinking of the problem and is not also the one thinking of the solution. He's just there to do what is what is being told to do. So um that, that, those are the categories of designers, and that's how they can be involved in branding. Okay, so there, there are two things I want to take us back. You talked about you talked about social media, and then now, but first, let's talk about this pyramid. Uh, I hear a lot of designers, especially ones that run their own private enterprise, ask like, why do why do this uh, why is this designer paid more? So is this pyramid why you see designers any more any more than the other person talking about uh, private uh, designers that run private enterprises? So because I get asked that question a lot, especially uh, with my students on my uh, brand identity design course, they get to ask like, uh, why is it that these some designers earn millions of naira, millions of dollars, and then I'm still struggling to. I'm still struggling to get this client to accept to pay me 10,000 Naira for a project. Mm. This pyramid, mm. is that the reason why? So you have yeah. to move from just being an artifact designer to a, a, to the next stage, which is the design thinker, then yeah. ultimately you to be the design leader. Design leader, yes. Yes, that, that's exactly why some people earn more than others. And, and that's why I tell, I, I tell designers, don't focus too much on that technical skill. The technical skill is good, but it gets to a point where it cannot give you any more than what it's giving you for, in terms of results. So you are a good logo designer. You, it, it, it will earn you some money to, to, to a particular point where your skill cannot earn you more than that money. People cannot put more value on a logo than they are willing to give. Do you understand? That value cannot increase till you now have to do some thinking to now tell them how that logo will solve a problem and earn them more money, earn the client more money. The client is willing to say, hmm, so this thing is more than a logo. This guy has made me understand that this logo is more than a logo. It's more of the beginning of a brand story. And this brand story can now lead us into engaging more people. And engaging more people will mean more sales. And more sales will mean more money. And more money will mean that I can go on vacation with my family to this place I've always wanted to go. What do you think it's going to do? Pay you more money. But if all you're solving is just the logo is fine, the logo is fine, the logo is beautiful, the logo is fine, it's only an amount people can pay on a fine logo. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You know what? Nothing stays fine forever. Because, you know, when something is beautiful, when you get used to it, the more it just becomes, okay, you've gone past that, the logo is fine. Why should we pay so much for this logo? In fact, we've seen, we've seen something similar to this before because it has started becoming commonplace. So now, it now has to be a point of what problem are you solving? Are you solving a product problem? And the product can be a logo, a flyer, a this. Now, these are small problems. Or are you solving a project problem? A more, a bigger thing in terms, a process problem, not even a project. A process of, I'm improving the process. I'm engaging more people. And pe more people are buying from this company. Or are you solving a people problem, which is the biggest problem? And the, big, and the biggest problem always being the biggest reward. And that's what design leaders do. They solve people problems because a lot of companies are stuck with people problems. They're like, these guys don't understand our company values. They come to work late. They don't attend to clients well. They leave early. They, they steal money. You understand that kind of thing? 
when you can come in and solve those problems, the client appreciates it more than solving a logo problem. You understand? Where you can come in and motivate people to say, I belong to the organization. I will defend this organization. I will not steal from this organization. I will show up on time. I'll be nice to clients. They will pay more. So think about it. What problem are you solving? Are you solving a, a product pro problem? Or are you solving a process problem? Or are you solving a people problem? When you start solving a people problem, you get paid more as a designer. Well, um, I'm, I'm hoping that a designer out there is listening in now. So move up your game. Stop just solving a, a product problem and start solving a people's problem. Now, so this year has been very unique. 2020 has been very unique. And this year, the digital media uh, saw quite an upsurge, like a surge of activity. So many businesses started, uh, brought their business online, I'll say. Because I wanted to ask, when you were talking about the role of designers, you made mention of social media and websites. I, cause, so I want to ask now, when it comes to social media, when it comes to websites, a lot of businesses are on social media these days, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, most of them also have websites. Now, these medias, these digital medias, I believe they play an important role when it comes to branding as well. There might be someone out there who, who, who might be asking this question, why do, I, why do I need to put my business on Facebook? Why do I need to put my business on Instagram? Why do I even need to uh, design a website for my business? Uh, can you help us throw more light on the, the importance of, uh, or the role digital media play when it comes to branding? Oh yeah, well, why do you need to be on social media? Why do you need to have a website? Because people need to find you. You understand? People need to find you. Um, and the truth is not everybody can come to your office. This day and age, if you always, if you only depended on people coming to your office, um, then you will have very little patronage because the world is a global village right now. So you need to be accessible. And where do people, where do, where do people go to access you? I mean, in the eighties, people would go to yellow pages to try to assess businesses. So they will say, I need a, a barber, I need a hairdresser, I need a makeup artist. So they go to makeup artists under Yellow Pages. You might not know the Yellow Pages well, but I know Yellow because I was born in the 80s. So I, I look under that, I look under C, I look, I look at the address, are they close to me? Mm, okay, and I'll go to the one that is closest to me. That's how they used to go. Now, Yellow Pages, have kind of faded off. Now you have the internet where people go to Google to check for stuff. If you don't have a website, it's hard to find you on Google. It's hard. You have to have some kind of web presence for people to find you on Google. Now, if people don't go to Google, they go to their social media page and just check for Nigerian barbers or barber salons in Abuja or stuff like that. You want to be there. So because of accessibility, you want to be on that social media platform. So it doesn't, it doesn't need to be, I like Facebook, I don't like Facebook. I like Instagram, I don't like Instagram. I don't like social media. I think once you, you are a business person, it's not about your likes anymore. It's just about what works or what doesn't work. So um, social media website, it's all about accessibility, where people can assess your stuff, can get to look at your stuff. So it's, it's, it gives us more advantage as a business, um, unlike, Back in the days when you had to take your physical portfolio to people's offices and they would look at it and look at what you've done. And this was not too far back. This was like in, in Nigeria though, maybe about early 2000, late 1990s, you, designers had to take their portfolio to people's offices if the gate man will allow you through. And if the receptionist will allow you to see the boss and they will look at your work. And sometimes they could be corrupt enough to take your work, take it out of your own folder and put it in somebody else's folder and the person will get the contract over you. But now you have your website. Nobody can take your, con your, your own content and just take it out and put it on their own like that. You can own it, you understand, and say, this is yours. And show the person, this is the link to my stuff. You don't have to wait to go through a receptionist. You don't have to go through a gate man. So that's what social media does. That's what the um, um, internet does. So, so I, I, I think it's very important to be on this platform. If you want to be accessible, if you want to be located, if you want to be identifiable, then um, these tools are just necessary. 
Honestly, I couldn't agree more. So if you're a business owner out there still having second thoughts about putting your business on social media, I don't think you should, honestly. Uh, we just, uh, I have a question from Emmanuel Ogedebe and he's asking, what makes a brand stick to the minds of people? I think it's, he's asking what makes a brand stick to the minds of people. Stick. Yeah. Yes, that's a good question that, that Emmanuel has asked. What makes a brand stick? Um, and on my on my um, Instagram page, you know, I put up a post like some weeks ago, and it was about this advert I used to see when I was in Canada. I used to watch this advert. They showed this advert every single night for almost six months, every single night. And all they used to say in that advert is head on apply directly to your forehead, head on, apply directly to your forehead. They would run that thing twice, back to back, every single night in Canada. And you know what? I hated that advert. I, I hated it because, and, and everybody I lived with in the house hated that advert. Well, you know what? When people had a headache, what did they buy? Head on. You understand? So one thing that makes a brand stick is repetition. Repetition in publicity, repetition in visibility. So you must always be in the faces of the people you want to sell to. You, 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 look, as a business, you, you cannot even live on this, oh, I want to be posh. I don't want to seem desperate. You are in business, you, got, you have to seem desperate. There has to be some level of desperation of I want to win this client. I want, to work, I want people to work with me. So it is the person that repeats the most, that gets seen the most, that sticks in the mind the most. And so it, it's very important to always continue to hammer on what you do and put it out there. So I, I tell designers, look, when designers tell me, I'm not getting patronage, or a business owner just tells me, people are not buying from me. It's been two months, nobody has called me. Nobody, and and I, I ask them, when last did you put your, your stuff on your status on WhatsApp? And they tell me stuff like, I don't like WhatsApp. I don't like that WhatsApp status. I don't like, I'm like, that, that's exactly why nobody's calling you. Because you, you are really th dealing with a business like if it's based on what you like or what you don't like. There is set rule, there are set standards that are in business that if you don't follow, you won't get results. So you must repeat, you must be visible. Those are the people people remember. You understand? So that's what makes a brand stick, visibility and um, repetition. That, that way you see brands like, Coca-Cola, you see it everywhere. They're everywhere because they're always repeating, repeating, repeating. Not like if it tastes better than than any other beverage out there, but they're everywhere. They have the resources to be everywhere. Not only that, but they also have the presence of mind to know the, the essence of repetition and visibility, which is very important for you as a business or a brand to, to have. Okay, so Emmanuel, I hope you're listening. So repetition, visibility, that's what makes a brand stick in the mind of people. And we have another question from Sylvester Ezanaka, and he's asking about how do I sustain a brand or how I think he's talking about it should be his brand. So he's talking about how do I successfully sustain a brand? Okay. Um, well, to sustain a brand, it still comes back to what I said there sticking in people's mind. You must stay at the fore of people's mind. Um, so number one, be repetitive, repetitive. Don't, don't be too quick to change your, your language or what you're putting out. A lot of people just put out, um, change their advertising a little too fast before people adjust to it. Don't feel bad putting up a particular project for two weeks, three weeks, one month. Let people know you had one that did it. Keep just keep putting out there. Um, so don't be don't, don't feel bad about rep repeating. Um, you see, if I look at the music industry now, um, that, that's something a lot of people that the music industry right now is so highly competitive, and there's something artists are not knowing now. That's why they are not making too much money from music because they, they are producing too. too the, the new content they are producing is like is like too many within a very short time. So you see an artist have a single, and before you know it, next month he has another single. Next month he has another single. And they're not profiting a lot from one single. Unlike 
10 years ago, 15 years ago, when you had the likes of like Two Face, that pro that, that was able to profit from African Queen for like two years. You understand what I'm saying? Just going everywhere to sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. You understand? So he made he squeezed that thing dry of everything that was meant to be in it. That is how you should be as as a business person, so as a brand. You must be repetitive. Don't get embarrassed to be repetitive. Let people know that this is what you do. Keep hammering it. So repetition and visibility. Although one thing I want to add to this to help him saying sustaining a brand. One important thing that sustains a brand is taking feedback. If you do not have a feedback mechanism, and that's where social media really helps too, a feedback me mechanism, then you will not be able to sustain your brand because you, a brand is sustained by feedback and going back to tweak some things, coming back, showing to people again, feedback. So um, feedback, a feedback mechanism should be in place. That means you, as a brand, if you put stuff, stuff out there, always read your comments. If, if you are on YouTube, read your comments. If you are on Instagram, read your comments. If you are on Facebook, always read your comments. I think some people just think they are bigger than they are. Just They don't read comments, just like, like there is some people even like, you, know, you, you read your comments, comment, reply the comments, and if they are telling you change something, one person says it, and that person says it, change something, change something, do this better. Take that feedback, go back and change it, come back. You say, if you do not, you start losing clients. You understand? So if you are not in touch with your feed, feedback mechanism, or you don't have a feedback, feedback mechanism, you will fail. That's why you have organizations like, um, I'll use a school too, where a school has their fees, and um, you, the parents are saying, your fees too expensive. The person at the front desk is telling you as the owner of the school, ah, this person's mother came to deal. She was really complaining about this school fees. We ignore that. The person comes again and says, ah, this person's uncle came to deal. We were complaining about school fees. If you do not go back and either choose a way to explain to them why they are paying that school fees, or even look up a way of coming up with a structured way in which they can pay that school fees, or even lower the school fees, that school in the long run is going to close down. You understand? Because people will start leaving. So you have to have a feedback mechanism if you want to sustain the brand. So repetition, visibility, and feedback is very important. Fantastic. Like I think uh, I think I, I, I can't agree any less or I can't agree any more. And you, when talking about repetition, which is going to take us on the next uh, on, on our next item or the next thing we're going to talk about, which is brand guidelines. But you have to stick around because it's going to we're going to discuss that in the next episode. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about brand guidelines. And I believe uh, brand guidelines helps a lot with, when it comes to repetition because brands wanting to stay consistent will need a brand guideline to ensure they stay consistent they appear the same all the time anyway so thank you very much sir and that is that is all we can take on this episode so stick around for the next episode which is going to be our third episode don't forget click on the subscribe button and go to prop master class if you want to see more of the amazing uh work when it comes to design business that Mr. Tola Alabi, the Logo King, has been doing. And don't forget his social media handles and mine are dropped in the link below. So you can click on it and then follow him on his personal page. And you can contact him as well because he's, he's a very generous person. His number is there so you can just call him. His, his number is there so you can just call him and then have your own personal touch with him. Thank you very much for this session, sir. And We'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thanks for having me.